Dead Stripper, Chapter 14, Scene 39, Later That Night. I'm at the Springfield Country Club, watching my friend wrestle Crybaby Waldo. Crybaby Waldo's a gigantic man who's dressed in pink from head to toe. Pink wife beater undershirt, pink tights, pink shoes, and pink socks with pink bows. My friend's wearing a black Speedo. He's muscular, six feet tall, and a little over 200 pounds. Crybaby Waldo hoists my friend up in the air and onto his shoulders. Then he extends his arms upward and lifts my friend over his head. Then he begins the classic airplane spin maneuver, circling the ring and looking for the perfect spot to body slam my friend. The auditorium's full. I'm sitting ringside in the midst of screaming fans. Slam his ass, shouts the guy on my right. No, 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 pleads the woman beside me. He's too pretty. Crybaby Waldo body slams my friend. He lands with a vicious thud. So vicious, it makes my seat quiver. And now my friend's laying in the middle of the ring, looking helpless and beaten. And showman that he is, he pretends to writhe in pain with his eyes closed, looking as helpless as a lamb about to be slaughtered. At the same time, and right in front of me, Crybaby Waldo is climbing the ropes in the corner of the ring. I got to tell you, it's not easy for a man who weighs 350 pounds. His weight keeps shifting back and forth, making the ropes wobble uncontrollably. I'm wondering if he's going to make it or fall and land on his huge ass. Somehow, seconds later, he's standing erect, straddling the top rope. His left foot's planted on one side of the turnbuckle, and his right foot's planted on the other side. Then he extends his arms outward like a tightrope walker using a balance beam and holds that pose for several seconds. Next, he bends his knees and crouches like a baseball catcher. Then he pushes off the top ropes with both feet and sends 350 pounds of flying beef through the air with no safety net below. No doubt he's going to crash land right on top of my friend. An ominous hush falls over the crowd. My friend knows what's coming. And he also knows when it's coming. He opens his eyes and sees Crybaby Waldo soaring toward him. He makes a face like he's panic-stricken, then rolls out of the way just in the nick of time. Crybaby Waldo belly flops onto the mat. So hard, the first three rows of spectators feel the vibrations. In a flash, my friend rolls Crybaby Waldo onto his back and pins his shoulders to the mat. The referee flops down on his hands and knees and pounds out the count with his right hand. One, two, three. My friend jumps to his feet. The referee raises my friend's right arm in the air, and just like that, Hitman Bruno wins another match. Then all eyes go straight to Crybaby Waldo, who's still lying in the middle of the ring. He rolls over onto his stomach. He starts pounding his hands and feet on the mat, squealing like a baby throwing a temper tantrum, then starts sucking his thumb. With perfect timing, his manager tosses a giant-sized plastic baby bottle into the ring. Crybaby Waldo picks up the bottle and starts sucking on the giant nipple. And the crowd goes wild with laughter. <laughs> Scene 40, an hour later. Four of us are sitting at a table next to the windows in the dining room at Pinocchio's Restaurant Media. Showered and dressed, Crybaby Waldo and my friend are sitting on one side of the table. I'm sitting on the other side with a guy named Joe. He's part of the management team at ECWA. My friend's drinking an amaretto sour. Crybaby Waldo and Joe are drinking chilled mugs of draft beer. And I'm drinking a bottle of Bud, no glass. Gotta hurt when you land like that, I say to Waldo. Crushes the fucking wind right out of you. It makes it tough to breathe. But you learn fast. You spread out and hit with as much of your body as possible. That's how you spread the impact. Here comes the pizza, Joe says. About fucking time, Crybaby Waldo says. I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend finishes his thought. We know. Heard it a million times. Hungry enough to eat a horse. The waitress is holding an oval tray with a large, a large Sicilian, half plain, half pepperoni. She sets the tray in the middle of the table. Just wave if you need anything else. And she walks away. Crybaby Waldo's digging into the pizza with both hands. A slice loaded with pepperoni goes onto his plate, and another slice goes halfway into his mouth with one push. Joe grabs a plain slice. 
My friend uses a spatula to politely place a plain slice onto his plate. And I'm waiting my turn when my cell phone rings. I dig the phone out of my pocket before the third ring. Hello? It's Jess. You busy? Just having a pizza with the guys. I'd like to get together with you, she says. Love to. When and where? Where are you now, she asks. At Pinocchio's and Media. Know where it is? I do. Be there soon. Crybaby Waldo's chewing his pizza like the end of the world's in sight. Joe's chewing like a normal person, but my friend's sitting there content to watch me on the phone. I end the call. Who was that, my friend asked. The girl from the other night. Your rider, he asked. Yep. You do Uber too? Crybaby Waldo wipes his mouth with the back of a meaty hand. Yep. The one you nailed, my friend asked. Right. Did I just hear right, Crybaby Waldo says. You screwed one of your riders? I'm grinning with pride in front of these macho men. Yep. How'd that happen? Waldo takes a big bite of his pizza. Believe it or not, I say, it was her idea. I was just lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time. My man, Waldo says, up high. I reach across the table and we slap hands. What's she look like, Joe asks. See for yourself. She'll be here in a few minutes. So, that's it for chapter 14. My friend gets body slammed by crybaby Waldo, but he still wins the match. Then the guys go out to Pinocchio's for pizza and beer. Dead Stripper is available as a paperback and an ebook at Amazon and most booksellers, and it's reasonably priced. And I'll see you next time for chapter 15. And that's a wrap.